continue the service today. We invite you to come and praise the Lord with us. Can you start with some thanks for the Lord? Lord, we give you thanks for being such an awesome God. We give you thanks for being such an amazing God, Lord. You've been faithful, Lord, and we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Join with us today. We say, our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns, he reigns forever and ever. Our God, our God is an awesome God. He reigns, he reigns forever and ever. Here we go. Our God is a holy God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a holy God. He reigns forever and ever. Sing. Our God is a holy God. He reigns, he reigns forever and ever. Our God is, Our God is a holy God. And he reigns. He reigns forever forever Repeat after me. Ever. Say forever and ever. Say forever and ever. 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 Hey, our God is a mighty God, and He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a mighty God, and He reigns forever and ever. Sing. Our God is a mighty God. He reigns, he reigns forever and ever. Our God, our is, God is a mighty God. He reigns, he reigns forever and ever. Listen to this. Our God is a healing God. Anybody know that? He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a healing God. He reigns forever and ever. Sing. Our God is a healing God. He reigns, he reigns forever and ever. Our God, Our God is a healing God. And he reigns. He reigns forever Come on and, and say ever. forever and ever. Forever and ever. Say forever and ever. Forever and ever. Say forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever, 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 he reigns. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a saving God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a saving God. He reigns forever and ever. Sing. Our God is a saving God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a saving God. He reigns. Come on and say forever and ever. 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 Oh Lord, I'll praise you. Oh Lord, I'll worship you. You're the Lord of Lords. You're the King of Kings. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is, Our awesome. God is an awesome God. He reigns. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a holy God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a holy God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a holy God. He reigns, he reigns forever and ever. Our God is a holy God. He reigns forever 
forever and ever. 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 God, hallelujah, he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords, almighty God, everlasting father, nobody like him, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, yes Lord, forever and ever, yes Lord, thank you Jesus, forever and ever, thank you Lord. I'm going to praise you, Lord, forever and ever. Yes, God. I'm going to worship you, Lord, forever Hallelujah. and ever. Because you're worthy, Father. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. You're worthy, Father. Forever and ever. You're worthy, Lord. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I want to worship you today, Father, because you're worthy, Lord. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Oh Lord, I worship you because of who you are. And Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Can you sing that with me this morning? Because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Can you make that decision today to give God praise wherever you are, whatever you're doing? Because of who you are, I give you praise. Not even thinking about the things he's done, but because of who he is, because of who you are, Lord. Because of who you are, what will you do? I will lift my voice and say, oh, Lord, Lord, I because of who you are, because of who you are, yeah, I worship you, Lord, I worship you, because of who you are, he's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, My Prince of Peace, and I worship you because of who you are. And I worship you, and I worship you because of who you are. Can we sing that verse one more time? Because of who you are. Because of who you are. I give you glory because of who you are, Lord. Because of who you are, I give you praise. I just love you so much, Lord, and I thank you for all that you've done because of who you are. Because of who you are, I will lift, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship, Lord, I worship because of who you are.
Prince of Peace. My Prince of Peace, and I worship you because of who you are. And I worship you because of who you are. That loves you, Lord. And I worship you. You're amazing. Because of Hold who on, you're awesome. Are. I give you all the praise, Lord. I worship. And I worship you. Hallelujah. Because, because of who you are. And Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are. Now give them worship today. Now give them worship today. He's an awesome God. He's amazing God. He's our heavenly Father. He's our Redeemer. He's our Provider. Our Prince of Peace. Our Lord of Lords. Our everything. And we just want to give you worship. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Father. Yes, Lord. None yes, like Lord. you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. None like you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We're always making a way. <laughs> I worship you, oh, I worship you. You are here, you're working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. Can you sing that? You are here. You, you are, are here. here. Moving in our midst today, Lord. Moving in our midst. And my response is? I worship you. Are you going to do that today? I worship you. You are here, Father. You are here. You're working in this place. Working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You say that again, he is a way maker. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, my God that is who you are. You are here. You are here, touching every heart. Touching every heart. Thank you, Lord. I, I worship, worship you. you. Oh, Lord, I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. You're healing hearts today, Lord. Healing every heart. You're worthy of the praise, Lord. I, I worship, worship you. you. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, Lord, you're here. You are here. Turning lives around. Turning lives around. I leave my hands in worship. I worship you. I leave my hands in worship. I worship you. Oh Lord, you are here. You are here. You're mending every heart. Mending every heart. 
And I worship, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, way maker. Way maker. Hey. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. I know you to be way maker. Way maker. Hey. Miracle worker. Promise Light in the dark, my God, that is who you are. One more time, wait, make, wait, make, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, wait, make, wait, make, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness. to sing this next part to encourage anyone today who may feel like things are kind of out of control, they don't understand what's going on, and don't feel, understand how God is working. Based on everything that we've already said today, we already know that beyond what our human eyes can see and beyond what our emotions feel, our God is always working. The Word says that all things work together yes. for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to His purpose. So you got to know yes. He's working it out for you. He's fighting for you. He's making a way for you, for you to be provided for, for you to be healed, for you to be delivered, for you to be set free. That's our God. He never fails. He never forgets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this part goes like this. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Sing with me. Even, Even though when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Even when I don't see it, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. Encourage yourself today. My God, that is who you are. Claim who he is. He is waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Can you just say waymaker? Waymaker, miracle worker, promise waymaker. 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 So before, before you even think about the things that you need Waymaker. from the Lord, take some time to think about the things that he's already done. Waymaker. Has he been a healer before? Hallelujah. Waymaker. Has he been a provider before? <laughs> Has he made a way out of no way before? Has he mended Waymaker. your broken heart before? Has he ever set you free Waymaker. before? Waymaker. Has he healed your body? Waymaker. Has he protected you? Thank you, Lord. Has he provided Waymaker. for you? So now through the lens of that same thing, begin to think about what you need. And you proof you already have by what he's already done for you. So you know that he can do it. He's proven himself to be sure. He's proven himself to be a provider. So now just say it. Lord, I know you are. I don't have to worry because you're I don't have to worry because you're a way maker. Way maker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, 
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Now give him praise. Worship him. By faith, it's already done. Whatever you need, he's already done it. Hallelujah. You're already healed. You're already delivered. You're already set free. He's already providing for you. He's already making a way. Trust it. Believe it. Receive it. Know it. Never doubt it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tried him and I know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you today. Stay encouraged, my brothers and my sisters. Stay affirmed in who you know our God to be. And never forget it. Never let go. Never let go of what you know to be true about our God. And he'll meet every one of your needs. He'll come through right in time for you for whatever you need, whenever you need it. He knows better than we do. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Continue praising. Continue worshiping him. And we're excited to bring up our pastor today, Pastor Marcus Jackson. Hallelujah. A promise keeper. He's our light in darkness. That's who he is. Amen. I want to say praise the Lord and good morning to everyone. Amen. We're thankful to the Lord for the gift of this day. We're thanking the Lord for his goodness, for his kindness, for his mercy, for his grace. We thank God for just being God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you who are viewing via live stream. Amen. And uh, we pray. It is our continual prayer, as we said over and over, but this is in earnest, that you would continue to be in good health and prosper even as your soul prospers. I want to take this opportunity to wish you all a happy Memorial Day. Amen. I thank God for those of you who have served in the military and those who are yet serving in the military, and we're grateful for those who have served this country in the military and have paid the human ultimate price by giving their lives uh, in the field or on the field of battle. So we acknowledge those families who have lost service members in the defense of our country and we acknowledge those of you who are, thank God, still living and have served and are serving uh, in the military. So we want to wish you all a happy and a blessed Memorial Day. Amen. All right. Today is our day that we have chosen in, in conjunction with our Memorial Day weekend to honor and celebrate those 2020 graduates. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We deem this our Education Sunday. So we want to bring up our administrator and youth pastor just to give an acknowledgement and a shout out to those graduates who have uh, gave us your information on time. Amen. Amen. All right, let's receive Pastor Tracy Willis. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm expecting to hear you guys even through the live stream. I want to hear you loud in your houses and shaking the block saying praise the lord all right so today we are here to recognize those who as he said did turn in your information and our first one would be gregory dantzler the third gregory dantzler the third for those that don't know that is the grandson of our emeritus pastor and current cfo vanessa ussery he's actually moving into the ninth grade amen amen pico middle school will be his next school and our next one is a high school graduate. He is the grandson of Brother Doc Matthews. His name is Malik Whitehead. Malik is graduating from Cathedral High School, and he will be studying neuroscience at USC. Woo! 
And uh, our pastor is quite modest. Those who don't know, he actually stepped out the sanctuary for a while, but we're going to give him a big shout out. For those of you who are out there and you're on social media, I need you guys to post this, tweet it. I need you to Snapchat it, do everything, because we want to celebrate our incredible leader who is receiving his master's. He's getting a master's science and theology from E9 School of Theology and Bible College. So a major shout out. He's coming in all quiet and humble. But yes, if you guys, I know you're on social media because you're watching us online, so take a moment, shout him out. It takes a lot to be a leader of a church and an all-around husband and a support and finish school. Amen? So y'all shout him out online for us. All right. Thank you so much for your attention, and we will turn it back over to the uh, now master's holder, uh, almost doctor, Marcus Jackson. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank Amen. you for your attention. All right, praise the Lord. <laughs> God's great, isn't he? Yeah. Amen. We thank, we thank God for all the graduates and all those who are promoting to the next grade. Amen. Just want to give a shout out to those who are homeschooling parents. Uh, we praise God for you and we pray that God will strengthen you even as you homeschool your children, that he will undergird you with patience, amen, and wisdom. Amen. And endurance, because we know that it's not a familiar task for most of our parents to now be parents and teachers. Amen. So God bless you is our prayer. And we encourage all of our students to do your absolute best. Amen. In your studies. All right. Amen. We are just excited uh, about the Lord Jesus. And... Uh, we will look into the word today. We're believing that God has a word for us to strengthen us, to encourage us, to lead us, and to guide us. Amen. We look to him for we, we understand through this word of God that man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So Lord, you formed us out of clay and for your glory we were made. So we're asking that you would use this vessel in this moment as you choose and let our life, let it praise you. We pray that you give us all ears to hear what your spirit has to say to the church and God, we ask that you help us to be doers of your word and not hear us only. We ask and receive and thank you in advance for hearing and answering our prayer and granting us these blessings in Jesus name. Amen. I want to talk today from a thought victory over the world. Victory over the world. Now to some it may not seem because of what the entire world, the entire globe is experiencing. Some may not have an idea or even a thought in their mind about victory. Some may be even entertaining thoughts of anguish. Some may be entertaining thoughts of depression or even thoughts of defeat. Some may feel that all is lost, but I come to declare to you, and especially to the saints of the Most High God, that we, in fact, have victory over the world. And when we talk about the victory over the world, we are focusing in this morning on the world's systems, the world systems, not the planetary or the 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 physical uh, world, not the earth so much, the flowers or the trees and things like that, because we know that God has given us dominion over these things. But when we talk about us having victory over the world, we're talking about the world systems. 
because the world systems are in direct opposition and defiance to God and to his word. We are cautioned in the word of God to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. We know that the things that are in the world are the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. These are the three main tools that the instigator and the adversary of our souls and the accuser of the brethren, Satan himself, he manipulates and uses skillfully and craftily these things uh, to keep the world plundered in darkness, to keep the world from acknowledging God uh, as God, to keep the world in a state of constant turmoil and confusion, to keep men and women from being born again uh, of the water and of the spirit because he even our enemy realizes that because uh, he was successful somewhat in allowing Adam and his wife and, and causing Adam and his wife to fall in the garden, he understands that within the human nature because of that Adamic sin and that fall that all mankind since then were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. So he uses this fact uh, and tries to keep men and women from coming to the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he has been around for a very long time and no human being uh, simply just by human reasoning and logic can match wits or outwit this enemy of our souls. So this is why we need somebody stronger than our enemy to secure a way for us to have, obtain, receive, and continue to walk and live in victory. And this victory, it only comes through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want us to go to the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter number 5, and uh, we will begin at verse number 1. We're talking about victory over the world, and it's the world systems. You can see that the world systems is against God. Uh, the world system really don't want to acknowledge God. So here we are in 1 John chapter number 5, beginning at verse number 1. And I have, as you well know, the amplified version of the Bible. Watch what it says here in verse number 1. Everyone who believes, and I like how the amplified unpacks this belief. Everyone who believes adheres to, trusts, and relies on the fact that Jesus is the Christ the Messiah, is a born-again child of God. And everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of him, his offspring. So basically here in this, in this beginning verse of this chapter, uh, the writer here is acknowledging that everybody who believes, who, who adheres, and that adherence means to obey, Everybody who obeys, who believes and relies, put their trust in the fact that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah. Everybody who does this, everyone who does this is a born again child of God. Because simply if you believe uh, that Jesus is the Christ, then you will obey that command that he gave uh, to uh, Nicodemus that you must be born again and we who have believed that he is the Christ he is the Christ he is the Messiah I remember reading another portion of scripture where Jesus said except you believe that I am he you shall 
die in your sins. Remember the conversation we, I think we talked about a week or two ago that he had with the woman at the well. And she said, I know that the Messiah is coming. And Jesus said, I'm I'm him. I'm talking. You're, you're talking to the Messiah. Uh, so, so there's a great blessing. There is a great benefit. Uh, uh, and there's great freedom and liberty to everyone who believes that Jesus is, in fact, the Christ. He is, in fact, the Messiah. And he said, everyone who does this and obeys his command to be born again of the water and of the spirit is a born again child of God. See, a lot of people want to use the terminology born again, but they don't want to get to the to the details of what it means biblically to be born again. It's not just a shaking of somebody's hand. It's not just uh, putting your name on a roll at some local congregation, but you got to be born of the water and of the spirit. And everybody who's born of the water and of the spirit, then you are a child of God. And if you are, and since you are a child of God, you have to love, and we love the Father. And we also love the one who is born of him, his his offspring. We love Jesus. Verse number two, he said, by this we come to know, recognize, and understand that we love the children of God. So here's a sign. Remember Jesus uh, in his ministry, he said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. So here is a indicator, if you will. Here is a description of the true children of God, of the true born again believers. That not only do they love God, not only do they love Jesus, but they love one another. So whatever congregation you happen to be a member on of on this side of eternity, if you don't love your brothers and your sisters, then there should be a question about your true born again experience. Because I read in the Bible, somewhere it said in the Bible that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So love should be easy for those who have been born again. Love, uh, that love of God that has been shed abroad in our heart, it needs to be extended uh, on a continual basis uh, to one another. By this, we come to know, we come to recognize and understand that we love the children of God. Verse 2 says, when we love God and obey his commands. How can we say that we love God when he, when we and if we don't obey his commands. I like how the Amplified unpacks it a little bit. It says obey his commands, orders, and charges. It doesn't say his suggestions. Uh, it says we have to obey the commands of God. We are commanded to do certain things. We're commanded to love one another. We are even commanded to love our enemies. God, you have to help us on this because some of us uh, fall short on this part. That's a command. It's not a suggestion. It's not an option. It's not a smorg God's word is not a smorgasbord where you can pick something and that you want and go over something that you don't know. He commands us. He orders us. He charges us to to love one another. He charges us uh, to do good and pray for those that will despitefully use us. Uh, so, see, when we do this, we are, we are proving to ourselves uh, and we are proving to one another that we do indeed have, in fact, victory over the world. Because how can you love your enemies if you ain't got no victory? Uh, so the Bible, it tells us uh, when we keep his ordinances and are mindful of his precepts and his teachings. Anytime you see uh, in the word ordinances, uh, precepts, uh, and teaching, he's talking about the word of God. So when we obey God's word, when we believe God's word, we are proving to ourselves and to others uh, and acknowledging that we love God because we obey his word. Verse number three, for the true love of God is this, that we do his commands, keep his ordinances 
and are mindful of his precepts and teaching. That sounds like we just repeated. So oftentimes when Jesus in his ministry, would, he would say, verily, verily, it means pay close attention to this. So here we just had this in the second verse, and now here it is. It comes again in the third verse. Just in case you might have been foggy in your minds about what true love is, God allows the writer uh, to repeat this again in the third verse. For the true love of God is this that we do his commandments. I hear James echoing in the back of my mind and he's telling us that, that we have to be doers of the word and not to hear us only, that we do his commands, keep his ordinances and are mindful of his precepts and teachings. And he says in the last part of this third verse, and these orders of his are not irksome. They're not burdensome. They're not oppressive or grievous. The commands and the word of God to a true uh, child of God, they're not burdensome. Remember Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly and you shall find rest for your souls. L listen, Jesus does not want us to be under a heavy burden where we cannot accomplish the things that his word commands and charges and orders us to accomplish, but he's given us the power. I hear the Bible said in one place that we have all things that pertains unto life and godliness. So here it echoes in this last part of the third verse of 1 John chapter number 5 and these orders, these commandments if you will, of his, the orders of God, they are not irksome. So the orders of God, they don't get on our nerves. If you allow me to open that up, they're not irksome. They're not burdensome. They're not too heavy. We can handle what God tells us in his word because we have him in us. They're not oppressive and they're not grievous. Obeying God is not grievous to a true lover of God. O obeying God is a delight. I hear Jesus said at one place, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. I delight to do thy will. And every born again believer who truly loves God, you ought to have a delight. Wait a minute. We ought to have a, a delight to do the will of God. We ought to be eager huh, and excited and enthusiastic about doing the will of God. Verse number four is where I got my thought from. Here's what it says in verse number four. For whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. Whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world even our faith. I'm so glad that our faith is the victory that conquers the world because we put our faith in Jesus Christ. We have the, the victory and this victory is not something that we have to wait for to receive. We have already received the victory. I'm looking back now at the gospel of St. John in chapter number one and verse number 12. Here, Jesus, he's talking in his ministry and this is what he says in verse number 12 of the first chapter of St. John, but to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, the power, the privilege, and the right to become the children of God. Aren't you glad that when you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ preached, you received him? Because a lot of folks have heard the gospel message year after year after year, and they still have not received him. They still reject the gospel message. They still reject the fact that Jesus came and he came and he gave his life for the whole entire world. But I'm so glad that you and I, one day we heard the gospel message of our souls. And the Bible said, but as many as did receive and welcome him. See, you got to hear him, you got to receive him, and you got to welcome him. And if you're in that group, let me tell you what you already have received. He said he gave them the power 
the authority, the privilege to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in. Here it is again, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. The Bible declares that there is no other name given uh, among heaven under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. There is no salvation in no other name. It's the name of Jesus. I'm thankful that we know the name. I'm thankful that we acknowledge the name. I'm thankful that we have the name. I'm thankful that we've been baptized in his name. And the Bible says in verse number 13, these are the ones who owe their birth neither to bloods nor to the will of the flesh that is of physical impulse nor to the will of man that of a natural father but to God they are born of God I'm so glad that man did have nothing to do with our salvation it was a God thing because man was not in condition to save himself but God came himself he robed himself in flesh and came down and tabernacled with us as the Lord Jesus Christ and he came on a mission and his mission was not impossible his mission was very possible he came to offer his life as a ransom for many and he did that on the cross of Calvary and we are the ones we owe our birth we owe our victory we owe our praise because we were born of God we were born by the will of God now I'm jumping now to St. John chapter number 16 and here Jesus is saying something here. He wants to encourage us. I want to encourage you this morning. Yeah, you're in isolation. Yeah, you're in quarantine. Yes, it may not look like to those who are looking at you and watching you that you have victory. But I want you to put your hands on yourself and declare that I already have the victory. Because Christ has given me the victory. So you don't look like what you're going through. And when when you come out of this situation, when we come out collectively of this quarantine, we're not going to look like what we've been through. But how are we going to come out? I'll tell you how I'm coming out. I'm coming out with my hands up. I'm coming out with the praise. I'm coming out giving God glory, and I'm coming out glorifying his name. So since I'm coming out like that, I might as well be in here like that. I ain't going to wait till the battle is over. I think I'm going to shout now. I ain't going to wait till he brings me out. I'm going to shout while I'm in the midst of the pandemic. I'm going to praise God because he's just that good. So the Bible said in John 16 and verse number 33, hear the word of the Lord. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you might have, you may have perfect peace and confidence. You don't have perfect peace and confidence. Yeah, they're doing their best in the government. Yes, they're doing what they know how to do. We don't have a perfect peace and confidence in them. Yes, we hope that they're doing the right thing. We pray for them because God has told us to pray for those who are in authority. But our perfect peace and our confidence is in Jesus Christ. He continues verse number 33 of John 16, Amplified Version. He said, in the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. I know you can identify with that in your condition right now in what we're all going through. Some of us are feeling distress. Some of us are feeling frustrated from time to time and we're dealing with this type of tribulation and trials. But I'm so glad that we're dealing with this and not in the tribulation that will come upon the earth after the church is raptured out of here. There's a difference. So we can go through this because when God gets ready, he's going to come and snatch us out of this. But I hear Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. You mean to tell me while everybody's going crazy and doing what they want to do, I can have perfect peace and perfect confidence in my perfect God and in my perfect Savior. I have a peace. Wait a minute. Let's not be stingy. We have a peace that passes all understanding because this peace is coming from the Prince of Peace himself, Jesus the Christ. He said in the world you have tribulation and trials 
troubles and distress and frustration. That Now that right there is enough to put a frown on anybody's face. But we got to continue with the verse. He said, but be of good cheer. Wait a minute. Now you just told us that we're going to have these things. And now you're telling me you didn't, Jesus done flipped the script right in the middle of this verse. He said, yeah, you're going to have these things in the world, but be of good cheer. Take courage and be confident, be certain and undaunted. Why, Lord, are you telling me these things in the face of what don't you understand and don't you know what we're going through? I can't go where I want to go. I can't do what I want to do. I can't hug my brothers and sisters yet, and I miss seeing their faces, and I got to see them on FaceTime. Thank God for FaceTime, and thank God for Zoom, but I, but I, I don't want to just Zoom. I want to meet my brothers and sisters in the same room, but here God is saying that you have to be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, certain, and undaunted. Why, Lord? Here's the answer. For I have overcome the world. Glory. Hallelujah. He said, I have deprived the world of its power to harm you. And I have conquered it for you. So Jesus said, listen, the world can't hurt you. The world can't harm you. I've taken the power of the world away from the world to harm you. That's why in your isolation, that's why in your house, that's why in your close quarters, you ought to give God a praise right now because he has overcome the world. And the Bible already told us this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith, our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is not in institutions, well-meaning institutions, but our faith is in the author and the finisher of that faith, and our faith is in Jesus Christ. So I'm moving now to 1 John chapter number 4, and verse number 4, little children. You are of God. You have to recognize that you got to remind yourself that you belong to him. And you watch this now. And you have already defeated and overcome them. Listen, you've already defeated and overcome the agents of the Antichrist. You've already defeated and overcome them because he who lives in you is greater. He who lives in you is mightier than he who was in the world. Yes, you might live by yourself in your apartment, but I come to tell you that if you're born again of the water and of the spirit, you ain't living by yourself. You got someone living in you, and the one that's living in you is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hear the Bible said, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. So if you're in your house with your family, loved ones, or by yourself physically, I want you to know you ain't by yourself. I suggest to you, I beseech you right now by the mercies of God to lift up a praise and declare what God said about you in the midst of your house. Say, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. No, you didn't say it convincingly. You got to say it to convince yourself because I know some of the thoughts that are trying to invade your mind. But stand up. Stand up and walk around your house right now. Put your hand on yourself and declare that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You got victory. You got no victory. You got victory over the world. I hear God say them through the Apostle Paul in Romans the 8th chapter, very familiar, but we got to remind ourselves about what is written because if you watch too much news, it'll get your spirit down, but you got to get to the good news, and the good news is the gospel and the word of God. So I hear Paul reminding the saints at Rome in Romans the 8th chapter and verse number 35. He asks a question here, and I pose the same question to us on this morning. Who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering and affliction and tribulation or calamity or distress or persecution or hunger 
or destitution or peril or sword. Descend, whatever you want to name. COVID cannot cancel Christ. Hallelujah. You need to put that out on your uh, media page. You need to put that out on a hashtag. COVID has not canceled Christ. And it will not cancel Christ because you are more than a conqueror through him that love you. You got victory over the world. Shake yourself. Stand up straight and declare that you got victory over the world. Even as it is written, for thy sake we are put to death all the day long. We are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, 37, yet amid all these things, wait a minute, amid everything that's facing us and amid everything that might come on after, yet amid all these things, we are more. Glory. Hallelujah. We're more than conquerors. You're more than a conqueror and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. Listen, tell yourself, you're more than a conqueror through him that loves you. And the one who loved and still loves you is Jesus Christ. So Paul, he narrows it down in verse 38. For I am persuaded beyond doubt. This is what I want to speak to somebody's faith this morning. You got to be persuaded no matter what you see, no matter what you feel. I got some pain in my body right now, but I am persuaded. You hear what I said? I'm persuaded beyond doubt, and I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, no principalities, no things impending, things that might come, things that are already here. I'm persuaded that these things, no angels, no principalities, no things impending and threatening, no things to come, no power, whatever power they think they might have and exert it over us, no height, no depth, no any thing else in all of the creation will be able to separate us nothing is going to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus that's why you know you already have the victory can't nothing separate you from the love of God because our faith is grounded and anchored in the love of of our soul soon he that shall come he will come and his reward is with him so I advise you to lift up a praise and we need to celebrate the fact that God has already sent his word he knew that in 2020 this pandemic would come, but before the pandemic came, he sent his word to cover us in this pandemic. So I hear God say through the Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter number 1, verse 12, giving thanks to the Father, watch this now, who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people in the light. God qualified me for victory. God, he qualified you for victory. When you put your faith and confidence and obedience in Jesus Christ, for the Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and he's transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have our redemption through his blood which means the forgiveness of our sins. We're victorious because Jesus is our redeemer. We're victorious because he has forgiven us of our sins. We're victorious because we are heirs 
and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, we have victory over the world, over the world systems. The world can't do nothing to us because let me remind us that this world is not our home. Soon and very soon, we're going to get up out of here. For the Lord himself, he shall descend from heaven with a shout. I'm looking for the shout. I'm listening for the shout. I'm looking up because I feel and believe according to the word of God that our redemption is drawing nigh. I'm wearing this world as a loose fitting garment. I don't want nothing tying me down. I want to be light for the flight, whether it's morning, noon, or night. I ain't, I ain't gonna carry no baggage. I just wanna see Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. And we're flying first class, y'all. Glory. Ah, you need to give God praise. But let me close with the celebration of thought. I got to go back to the Old Testament and Regarner and rehash and rehearse in our minds why we need to live like we are. We are already victorious, so let's walk in the victory that Christ has secured for us. Psalms 24, verse number 6. I love the Amplified. This is the generation, the description of those who seek him. We are the generation of those who seek God. We are the ones who inquire of and for him. God, we need to inquire of you and for you. And of necessity, we require him. I require Jesus every day. Can't live without him. Don't want to make a move without him. I hear God said in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I'm continuing verse 6 of Psalm 24, who seek your face. Oh, God of Jacob, listen, if there ever was a time for us to seek the face of God, it's right now. Then I hear some encouragement, and I want to encourage you as I gain encouragement through and in and by the very word of God. Here's what he says in verse number 7. Lift up your head. O ye gate, and be lifted up, ye age abiding doors, and the king of glory may come in. You ain't got no business singing no sad song when you got the victory that Jesus has given you. So lift up your head, O ye gate, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is, who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. He's fighting for us. He's already given us the victory. And he's fighting for us even now. So lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift them up, ye age abiding doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is? Who is he then? This king of glory, the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. He is a captain of our salvation. He, I'm talking about Jesus. He is, that's why we can celebrate him. That's why we can celebrate the, the victory that is already ours because we believe that he is the Messiah. He is our God. He is our king. He is our provider. He is our healer. He is our way maker. He is our righteousness. He is the wisdom of God. He is the power of God. He's our healer. At the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Cancer, get on your knees. Cancer, you got to bow to the name of Jesus. Diabetes, Fall on your face. 
you got to bow to the name of Jesus. Lupus, you ought to lay out prostrate. You got to bow at the name of Jesus. High blood pressure, you got to bow at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. He's given us the victory. I heard a Bible said that when Jesus got up on that third day, he got up with all power. He led captivity captive. All those things that like to plague us, he had them in chains and he led them. So whatever is trying to attack you, you got to look at the train of Jesus. And Jesus got those things shackled. And he's dragging them out as a victorious conqueror. And since he is a victorious conqueror, so are you. Because you're in him. So give God a praise for the victory that you have. For the victory that is already yours. For the victory that you live in. You move in. You walk in. You sleep in victory. You can lay down and have sweet sleep because God never sleeps. You got victory over the world. God bless you. God bless you. I just wanted to speak to your faith this morning and encourage you that you have victory over the world. Amen. Amen. If we live in the Lord will, as our praises will sing, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Lord. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Then again, we make. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.